This is one of those things where I, got, I, I tapped out of Cobra Kai because I just don't believe Ralph Macho can beat anybody. <laughs> and when I saw Godzilla outrunning Kong, I'm out. What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nigerian Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we have been waiting for this movie. Well, Brian, I have to be honest, I this movie wasn't on my radar. This was... Uh, Included in a bunch of other stuff that was going to be coming out. We had Monarch. We had uh, Godzilla versus, uh, and Kong, the Kong movie, uh, and a couple of other things. And then there was uh, Godzilla Minus One, which I didn't know what it was until I saw the trailer. An individual who I converse with on, a, uh, on, a, on occasion. And I was eagerly anticipating it then the reviews and the word of mouth starts to build up and people saying what we've heard in the past with regards to uh godzilla films is who cares about the humans right that's the one thing that we like ah we want to get some <coughs> monsters this one brian had a very healthy balance and everything meant something and Godzilla was what he is and always always has been was a monster and I left the theater Brian very enthusiastic about what's to come if they continue on with this series and I was also very I admired the where they went with this movie and to me Brian I'd be surprised if Oscar season, this mm. movie doesn't get nominated for something, at least. High praise. Um, <clears throat> deservedly so. Yeah, there's, there's definitely kind of a, you know, there's a Godzilla moment happening that probably was almost accidental um, in the sense of, I think it actually kind of started with the Monarch early buzz. Yeah. A show that kind of on the surface, you're like, how can this actually be good? Why is Kurt Russell in this? Like, why would he sign up to do this? And then the early buzz everyone talks about is there's no way a show like this should be this good, but it is that good. Um, and I've really enjoyed the, like how they've structured that, you know, how they've kind of focused on the people. This will be a recurring theme focused on the characters in that show. That's kind of what makes the show go. The monsters pop in and out and they look fine. The, and the, the effects are great, but like they don't overuse them. <laughs> Um, and then the trailer for Godzilla X Kong, which is the sequel to Godzilla versus Kong drops for next May. And like, listen, I, I, I love all of these kinds of movies, but I do think that trailer leaned more toward the goofiness, un the unbelievable <laughs> and the silly and honestly, it reminded me a little bit of the way Japan used to make Godzilla movies in the 70s. Yes. Where he, you know, where the guy in the suit kind of became this almost a lovable, you know, he'd be hopping around. You could tell he was happy or you could tell he was sad and he had a son. And like, you know, it got that's pretty, when I was out. It, it got pretty silly. And I've seen all of those. And I used to watch them as a kid on WPIX when they did the, the Godzilla movie marathon. I watched all of them. But they were silly. And there's a scene in the Godzilla X Kong trailer where Godzilla's running like he's Carl Lewis. And I'm like, are you trying to bring back the 70s Godzilla when you do that? Because we're so far removed even from what Gareth Edwards did with Godzilla in 2014 when he was pretty terrifying. And then this movie comes out. And it was almost like a mic drop from Japan of like, okay. This is how it's done. We, we let the... We let you Americans play in the sandbox. And I'll explain the legality of that in a second. We let you Americans play in the sandbox. And yeah, our filmmakers may have messed around for a while. But this is our thing. It really does mean something to us. And let, let us show you how it's done. And yeah. that's what this movie really is. It's a master class. Yeah, absolutely. In this type of movie. It's a master class in production. How to manage a budget how to 
I mean, I'm pretty sure, listen, budgets get crazy when you have, the, like, people like the individuals that made this movie, and kudos to them, because they made it happen with whatever they had, and they made it look amazing. This is one of those things where I, got, I, I tapped out of Cobra Kai because I just don't believe Ralph Macho can beat anybody. <laughs> and when I saw Godzilla outrunning Kong, I said, no, no more. I'm out. I'm out. I'll hear what people have to say, but I'm not, I, I just don't have time for the goofiness and silliness, Brian. I'm just sorry, especially if I'm not expecting, especially after seeing this. Yeah. So Takashi Yamazaki is the director. The rumor was the budget for this film was $15 million. One five. He said in an appearance, I wish it was that big. So you could use your imagination as to how much money in a world where we have, and a lot of the world has chastised the output of 200 to $300 million budgeted films this year from you know, things that Marvel has made to Indiana Jones to the things that DC has made. And we're talking about less than $15 million. And to my mind, like Godzilla looks really good in this movie. You look like, like Godzilla, yo. And like, this is not, we are, you know, as I said, we are a long way from the dude in the suit jumping yeah. around. This is a largely CG Godzilla. And then there's also a model. I've, saw, I've seen it. There's like a mock-up model of him that they use. That they've held up. He's maybe like a couple feet tall. But, and I watched some of the behind the scenes of how they did this. So maybe we'll just, you know, I don't know where you want to start. Do you want to start with the monster stuff or do you want to start with the human stuff? Because in this movie, you have to focus on both to actually appreciate it. Uh, we can start with the human stuff, Brian. Okay. What, what what were your? I did first of all when I went into this movie, Brian. I didn't know what I was expecting. Um, I just saw the trailer. I thought it was dope. Um, and I said, let me go see it because people are talking about it. But the way they were able to create this narrative of basically redemption. Mm -hmm. And I sort of knew what was going to happen at the end with the with the with the surprise at the end. I caught, I sort of knew. I was like, I bet you, I bet you, I bet you, and then it happened. Uh, but the way they uh, you you loved all the characters, Brian. You loved how the humans were thinking. I love the way they brilliantly mentioned certain things to give you an understanding as to why. Why is Jap Japan only the people dealing with this, right? Yeah. Why is the U.S. or other countries dealing with this? There were other things that were major happening that they couldn't be involved and perhaps wouldn't even believe if it was coming through the radio. So they had to deal with it. I like, because when you saw that he can regenerate, you was like, how the hell are they going to do this? And the way that they were able, you had this, that dude were, reminded me like a Japanese Albert Einstein. He was, <laughs> he, he reminded me of that, 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 that sort of, uh, uh, characterization. You just loved how everything came together as far as the human aspect of, of this film. So little background here, uh, Toho, the company that has made Godzilla for movies forever, uh, struck a deal with legendary, uh, about 10 years ago, in which they agreed to go on hiatus making Godzilla films. That opened the door for the Gareth Edwards Godzilla, um, Godzilla King of the Monsters, Kong Skull Island, Godzilla. The movies that came out in the US were a function of that agreement. So that moratorium, if you will, expired. And this movie is the first production that Toho put into place after it expired. And so I don't think it's an accident that it, after almost, you know, after a number of years where they didn't have the right to make a new Godzilla movie, they actually went to a period piece to remind people of what this really was all about, right? This, this is an allegory for the atomic age in, in the yes. end of World War II and what Japan went through. Yes. But I feel like they almost kind of subverted it because they, they chose to focus on these individual stories. I think the... Yeah. Godzilla King of the Monsters from 1954 is a classic, but it's a very, it's like a very national story, 
like yeah there's a like raymond there's a couple of characters the american version put raymond burr in it but like i don't think you ever develop a real affinity for the humans in that movie it's much more about the collective of japan and the fear they felt around mm -hmm. sort of the nuclear nuclear attacks they they suffered at the end of world war ii this went the other way it went very intimate like um is it tikashima we spent a lot of time understanding him from the very beginning his yes. faults his sins what he lives with yes. um his his attempts to rebuild and ultimately as you say redeem but then he, you know they smartly placed like his new fan right his new family um you know, noriko's pretty well developed um it's Tashibana, the guy who doesn't like him initially, like each of these characters is not wasted in this yeah. movie. Like they're given something to do. They're there to further the plot yes. so that when you get to the climactic battles, you know, the director mentioned using Jaws as an inspiration. I would say he succeeded. Like it, oh, it, yeah. there, there is that echo of Brody and Hooper and and um quint on the boat where you know all three of those characters so well so that when they go to battle with the shark you really do care about each of them in a very different way i think this movie succeeded where like you understood where the pieces were on the board so that when godzilla yeah he's stomping and destroying you know on a national scale but you're really looking for okay what's going on with this guy what's yeah. going on with noriko oh is Spoiler alert! Is she really dead? She has to be dead, right? Yeah. She, she gets blown away. Oh, that, that was that was a great uh, yeah. surprise at the end. Yeah, yeah. So like, all of those things keep you really invested, even when Godzilla is not on screen. So the movie's in Japanese for American audiences. So you're you're living the you're living the dialogue through the subtitles, but you still get the emotion. I think in all these scenes, like you really, there, it is it is emotional. Like I think this is one of the few movies like this where you're like, you're caught up in the the sadness, the terror, the the triumph, like all of it. So I, I think it's almost impossible for a movie like this to achieve that. And I don't think you have to have it. Like you and I both really like Godzilla King of the Monsters from 2019. And that one, the, the human characters are very incidental, but it's still a very enjoyable movie. But yeah. you definitely get the sense of if you're able to write character in a movie like this really well, gosh, it elevates it so much. It was just a, it was quite a surprise and it was a, a an enjoyable time at the movies, Brian, and the theater reaction to it, it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of people, Brian. I think the buzz, I think the buzz continues to grow. Mm -hmm. Hence why they, re, they, they uh, extended the release of the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, but people were quite pleased uh, at, at the end of this film. Uh, what was your crowd like? I, I know your crowd is usually not that good. No, it, was, that it wasn't that big. I mean, I, but the box <clears> office <throat> should not be diminished for a movie of this type with such a limited release. I believe it is actually a record setting box office for like a Japanese movie being released in the US. Um, and so it, it, yeah, they extended the theatrical for another week. I'm going to try to go see it again before it leaves theaters. Um, but <sighs> I'd be curious to see like if this filmmaker comes back to do the next one will they go for maybe more of a standard larger release in the u.s feeling like they've built an audience that will now anticipate this movie as much as whatever audience there'll be for godzilla x kong my curiosity to 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 whether he comes back and if they do come back to do this film what will this movie um be you know and and that's fascinating to me because obviously if you've seen the movie, you already know what happens at the end of that. Or the, uh, I think it was a mid credit, or was it, was it even a mid credit? Or was no, just it was the just end the of end. The it was basically just the end, the, the two part cliffhanger of her and then the underwater. Yeah. So the way they did that, you know, we're gonna get another one, right? Especially after breaking those records. So it'll be interesting to me to, to see how bigger this is and how much better it is because right now brian i think it is safe to say this godzilla movie is for me the best godzilla movie yeah. i've ever seen agreed agreed and i you know like i was always partial to the original even though the effects are campy just because of the tone yeah. um, but there's no question this is the best godzilla movie that's ever been put on screen um because of the story because of the monster and you're right it doesn't even though they, you know, they they let left the obligatory door open to do more, 
this is not a story you can do again. Yeah. Like they will have to reinvent it to make it work. Like you get one of these particular types of kind of post-war fallout, PTSD, um, true terror type stories. You know, and, and it's just like, yeah, they obviously wound up making Jaws 2 and Jaws 3 and Jaws 4. And we know how that went, right? So like you only got, you only had one true Jaws. And so I feel like this one is set a pretty high bar. So I'll be curious if he does come back, I would expect him to do something different. Uh, maybe even move the time period years forward as opposed to trying to pick up right where they left off. But we'll see. We'll see what he does. Um, what did you think of Godzilla? Like just the, like the way the monster was shown, the way it was used, what it could do. And we've seen so many versions now of of this creature through the years. My only gripe is being how deep the water is, I want to know what, he- what the hell he was walking on. Because that water is deep. Because that, that, that to me is like... <laughs> It's the ocean. Yeah, trying, right. yeah, y'all trying to sink him, but he's walking. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't swimming. He ain't treading waters. I'm sorry. <laughs> so what did I think about the monster? I thought about the monster. I, he was exactly that, a monster, Brian. A monster that is pretty much seemingly unstoppable and that you have to be very smart to think about a way how to... Uh, defeat him and the way they were able to do that was what had me because they already show you early on oh this dude can regenerate how are they gonna do this you know right and and then the smart thing about i just the the way scientifically they went about going uh, yeah. uh, about beating him was uh had me very engaged to see if their plan would work right and obviously we knew um there was gonna the plan seemingly in theory was gonna work, but something was gonna happen and they would have to. So I following all of that, there wasn't a moment. Brian, lately I've been going to the movies and just seemingly falling out. Like falling asleep, not keeping up. But this movie had me all the way engaged. I thought the idea of the the way they use the regeneration was really a smart. Uh, evolution of the typical Godzilla text, which he's so indestructible. Well, let's put the, in the movies where he's bad or he's the true Godzilla, right? Not the ones where he's fighting a silly monster. That's a little different, but like he's usually portrayed as basically indestructible. And then they come up with one trick at the end. It was the oxygen destroyer in the original. It's the volcano in Godzilla 1985. And, um, they didn't even have to do that in 2014 because they made him the good guy um, <laughs> right from the start. But I like the fact that the humans l- tried and lost several times in this movie. Like yeah. usually these movies, it's like we build to the one big idea. We put it all yeah. on that and somehow it works and yay, we survive. And this one, to your point, like they damage him pretty good in the first attack, right? And then you realize he can regenerate. So then they like, they try the, you know, they try the submersion technique and that fails. Then they try the decompression technique and that fails. I'm like, mm-hmm. so you kind of like the fact that like there's something next. Yeah. Like it's the human intellect is like evolving, but then he's beating it different ways. And then, yeah, it ultimately leads to this climactic sort of suicide run from the suicide pilot who didn't have the courage to make that run at the start of the film. And so that kind of, that kind of all comes full circle. But I like the fact of regeneration versus just like he's bulletproof. Yes. Um, it was almost, I, I found myself almost like, I don't know, they won't be able to do this in Superman, but I was almost like, it was almost kind of running through my head of like, how do you show this? And how do you show someone who's invincible as actually somewhat mortal, but then is so tough that they oh, ultimately man. kind of rise above that. So no, I, I loved it. I love the fact that there were several sequences where they almost thought they had him and then kind of, you know, he, he, he got Cause mad. you're like, Oh snap, how are they going to do this? You know, yeah. it's just, it's just that, 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 that. They were able to damage him enough to give them time or us time to see, to, to, to understand, oh snap, we didn't get him. What are we going to do next? It's, it's, it was just a ride. It was just a great ride, Brian. Yeah. This is, this is what, this is what movie, going to the movies is all about, ladies and gentlemen. Not, not the stuff that has been unearned. Yeah. As of late. I also loved. 
this was my favorite Godzilla breath. When I oh, saw yeah. when I saw them do it, I was like, "Yeah, see, this is what it's supposed to." He's not like shooting a laser beam, <laughs> like a surgeon, which is kind of <laughs> what it's become. If he's an allegory for a nuclear bomb, then his atomic breath should basically be the equivalent of a nuclear bomb, which is exactly what it do is what in this did, movie. Yeah. And when you see this, the, the spikes kind of lighting up. I, at that point in the movie, I was like, "Uh oh, something bad is going to happen." And then when he unleashes it, you're like. Well, this wow. is like destruction on a scale that there's no chance anything would stand up to. So I actually was, I applauded that. And obviously I think it's most poignant in the Noriko death scene where it basically it looks like the entire city is being wiped out in one mushroom cloud, which is yeah. obviously a callback to Nuclear Mom. Uh, and yeah. then she kind of pushes um, our hero out of the way. But yeah, no, yeah. I when, when they did it that way, I was like, why haven't they done this before? Why was it always so tame? Because this is what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, yeah. Oppenheimer, that's why. Yeah, no, you yeah, it's fair. Like that yeah, like if you want it's funny because Oppenheimer, the one with the few critiques was that there wasn't sort of um attention paid to the Japanese perspective of the project, which Nolan kind of said, like, well, this is a biopic of the man. It's not me dismissing that. It just wasn't Oppenheimer himself wasn't, you know, the one dropping it. So he didn't really live that aspect of it. Yeah. Um but this movie kind of gives you that. I mean, you definitely get that with the the terror of the people and stuff. And I, I listened, I listened to some stuff from the director and this got me on the Marvel, like, come on guys. Like you, this is, you need to watch this because we've seen, and we've read in the book where Marvel machine kind of was like, well, we want the director to worry about the characters and we, we got the visuals. Don't you, don't you worry about the visuals, but he talks a lot about the visuals with his limited budget, like where he wanted the camera. He wanted the camera underneath the legs. He wanted the camera close up on the head. He wanted to shoot and like you show him this like one guy, one VFX guy and him looking at the computer and he's directing the computer like, no, I want the tail to do this and I want the monsters like this is why you need a director with a visual sense in the yeah. room helping the VFX guys. This is why, because if you shoot this movie differently with the budget they have, it looks cheap. It looks fake. But the way they shoot it, it is magic. You believe there's this like 500 foot dinosaur walking around even though he's yeah. the movements he's making are relatively simple in the end yeah what's your what's your score uh i'd say four and a half stars for this one and i would say if you can see it in the theater definitely see it but if not yeah watch it at home on the biggest screen with the biggest sound you can find yeah i give it a four and a half and the reason i'm giving that four and a half is because of that that walking on water type <laughs> stuff it's just like but everything else was, I think, I was entertained, Brian. I was And it's entertained. two hours. It's not three. Yeah. It's two hours. It was, Full and story it was development resolution of two hours. Wonderful two hours, Brian. <laughs> Do you want to tie You wanted to tie this into some of the other Godzilla themes that have been coming up um, with Monarch? Yeah, I just, and just this idea that, like, you know, we'll, I think we'll start talking a little bit more about it because I feel like the success of this movie, I think Monarch has been successful as a show, mm -hmm. like, you know, monsters, this monster verse has kind of worked. It's kind of quietly become a thing. And like, I'm a fan, I'm a sucker for it. Like, I'm not as excited for Godzilla X Kong, quite honestly, but you know, there's enough going around here where I actually feel like we're going to see more um, in this area because there's been some success now. But I've been pretty pleased. I mean, I've been pretty pleased with the Monarch show. Maybe we'll do after the season's over, we'll do like a rundown of it and where we stand. But um, yeah, there, it's just, it's showing that there's potential and you can do things with this that you probably didn't think you could do, you know, 20 years ago. So, yeah. you know, again, in a world where we're looking for alternatives to capes and, and superheroes, like this is proving to be like another avenue for kind of blockbuster television, blockbuster filmmaking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's funny thing. I, I told Tracy about it and he's been hearing the same things that I told him. That this movie is excellent and he went to see it this weekend and he enjoyed it and i think freddie hasn't seen it. he's still waiting for it to, to come on his phone because he don't go to the movie theaters he's a he's a bootlegger what they call it that's what they call them bootleggers <laughs> let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the godzilla minus one film if you did see it if you haven't seen it if you're a godzilla fan if you haven't seen it then you're not a godzilla fan i'm sorry you're not a godzilla fan if you haven't seen this movie yet 
go see Godzilla minus one if you're a movie if you're a fan of the uh, the Godzilla franchise. Um, anything else, Brian? No, this was a real treat for the holiday season. So yes, that exactly, exactly. Uh, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on. Yeah!